Hi there! Planning a vacay? Booking a flight can often set you back quite a bit. But with airports only making a small portion of their money per passenger, how are they making the big bucks? Well, let's go behind the scenes to learn the sneaky ways airports are cashing in big time. And it's not from all those irresistible Cinnabons on every corner. Don't forget to click the subscribe button and turn on notifications to join us on the Bright Side of Life. LAX, Heathrow Airport, Dubai International Airport. These airports are among the busiest and largest in the world. So it's no surprise that these businesses are making the big bucks. Take London's Heathrow Airport. This airport is privately owned and is the busiest of its kind as opposed to many other airports that are partially or completely owned by the government. This means that Heathrow runs entirely on profit and is a money-making machine, making most of its dough from passengers. Nearly 650 flights come in and out of this airport daily, many carrying cargo along with passengers. How many passengers is that a year, you ask? A whopping 78 million! Wow, that's a lot of jet setters. Okay, so how much money does it take to run a commercial airport like Heathrow? Get ready for this! 1,485,650,000 bucks, give or take. This includes the money they pay their employees, as well as utility bills and such, which can rack up that massive number. To break even, Heathrow would have to receive $19 per passenger. But this money doesn't just come from the ticket they buy. This $19 also accounts for how much money a passenger spends on baggage and other airport services. But how do airports get people to spend money on these extras? There are lots of sneaky things airports do to get your hard-earned cash. Vendors Within Heathrow Airport, there are hundreds of employees, but not all of them work exclusively for the airport. Heathrow houses many businesses – restaurants, air traffic control, car rental companies, gift shops, and more. These businesses give the company a share of their profits. However, restaurants and gift shops in airports are notorious for being overpriced, and they're giving a fair share of their profits to the airport. Not surprisingly, these vendors are strategically placed, especially in high-traffic airports, to make sure you're spending as much money as possible. This tricky placement is clearly seen at Heathrow. In many cases, passengers have to walk through an array of duty-free shops to get from one terminal to another. Another trick the airports use is not announcing flight gate numbers until 45 to 90 minutes before the plane takes off. That way, people congregate in these middle areas between shops as they wait to find out their gate number. This boarding method isn't as common in the US. Very sneaky, Heathrow, very sneaky. Non-aviation land leases Ever notice that there are rental car parking lots and other clumps of shops close to the airport? These places experience lots of business thanks to the airport. Because of this, airports can cash in on the land leases these places occupy. ka -ching. Parking services If you can't get one of your friends to drop you off at the airport, you may very well have to pay to leave your car there over the course of your trip. These attached lots typically charge you per night, and it can add up pretty fast. Finland's Helsinki Airport boasts 13,000 parking spots. Landing and departure fees Airports make a lot of their money from the flights that land there. Typically, airlines pay airports $9,500 per flight to land but this amount can vary depending on the size and type of aircraft. What does this money pay for? Gate space, runway space, and check-in areas. Parachute repacking fees? No, that's not part of anything. Planes departing from the airport pay in a different way as the airport charges them per passenger. This price depends heavily on where passengers are going and whether they're taking a flight going a longer or shorter distance. For airlines that send copious amounts of flights in and out of airports, there are often special arrangements and fixed fees for their arrivals and departures. As commercial airports like Heathrow charge more for flights flying out over longer distances, they don't offer a whole lot of domestic flights. Otherwise, they wouldn't make as much money. That being said, passengers pay more for these tickets than they would to fly to other smaller airports. It's all about that money, honey. 
But not all airports are run this way. In the US, the majority of airports are completely or partially run by the government, so they don't have as much of a focus on money. But don't worry, plenty of these airports have sneaky ways of making a buck as well. So, if flights have to pay so much money to land and depart, where are they getting it from? The answer? Ah, ancillary fees or in-flight fees. As if the baggage fees weren't enough, passengers also face a wide array of fees once they're on their flight – movies, meals, and drinks. As of late, passengers have been able to log on to a Wi-Fi network while gliding through the air. Because, well, who can live for more than an hour without checking their Instagram feed, right? <laughs> With a lot of people traveling for work and needing to use their computers, having Wi-Fi on a plane becomes a necessity. Baggage fees If you've traveled via airplane in the last few years, you're all too familiar with baggage fees. While many airlines allow you one carry-on item for free, you'll likely be prompted to pay $25 to $50 for stowed luggage that weighs under 50 pounds. And if your bag weighs more than that, well, you'll be asked to fork up even more money. These fees really add up over a year. According to a recent study by consulting firm IdeaWorks Company and Car Trawler, a whopping $57 million in fees was made by U.S. airlines in 2017. That same year, $82 billion was made in baggage fees on a global level. Wow, I think I paid about half of that. While both government and privately owned airports are making a nice chunk of change, you may feel like you're going broke. Ticket prices have reached an all-time high. With all the fees and so on that go into traveling, Flying on planes isn't all that much fun anymore. If you're looking to save a bit of money during your travels, here are some tips. 1. Bring your own pillow. On most flights, blankets and pillows cost extra, unless of course you're in first class, you lucky dog. Bring an extra fluffy jacket to serve as a pillow on the flight, so you don't have to buy one that you'll end up returning at the end of the flight. 2. Pack a snack. Buying meals on the plane and in the airport can be quite costly. Why pay more when you're not even on vacation yet? So as long as it's within the airport security requirements, pack a sandwich or a snack to save yourself that extra 20 bucks. 3. Download a movie on your computer. In-flight entertainment can cost you. Some airlines offer it for free, but you'll usually have to pay for movies or cable TV. Instead. Download a movie or two from Netflix onto your computer before you leave. Now you'll have your very own entertainment system. But don't blame us when your nosy neighbor tries to watch over your shoulder. But hey, if he does, instead of getting mad, try offering him one of your earbuds and charge him 5 bucks or so to watch the movie with you. Just saying. So if you think airports charge vendors and airlines too much money, can you think of a better solution? Tell us your thoughts in the comment section. We'd love to hear them. Don't forget to give this video a like, share it with your friends, and click subscribe. Stay on the Bright Side!